Here we have the Dell Inspiron 15 by 1000 series. It is Dell's answer to the sort of like middle average computer user, somebody that doesn't need the fanciness of the Dell XPS or the gaming powerhouse of an Alienware. This is just for somebody that needs like a good quality machine to do productivity work and to do everyday tasks. And today we're going to find out if it's any good. Let's get the specs out of the way really quick. This particular test unit comes with a Ryzen 7 4000 series processor, comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM, comes with the Vega graphics, and a 512 gigabyte NVMe solid state drive. Now the awesome thing about the NVMe solid state drive and the uh, RAM is that both of them are user accessible and user upgradable. And actually, most of the machine itself is fairly easy to repair. For example, the LCD screen can come out of its bezel, the bottom of the computer just sort of pops off and you can sort of mess with it if you have to. That actually leads me to one particular concern about this laptop is our test unit came defective. The battery was not seated properly, so we had to open it up and reseat it. And I guess that's okay, but the thing is, is your average user is probably not going to want to pop open the bottom of their laptop upon arrival. That said, once you get the battery working, this thing is screaming fast. A cold boot from this thing is probably about 15 seconds long. The entire operation of the machine is just snappy. Everything sort of feels good and quick when you're using it. It's responsive. It sort of just does what you want it to do when you tell it to do it. And for general operation and practical use, I think that's a really, really important quality. In fact, I really kind of love this machine. It's not the best laptop ever made by any means. I still give the crown to the MacBook Pro. But that said, it's just a fantastic computer for most people. Your average user isn't going to want anything really much more than this. And what I really love is this simplistic and sort of minimalist approach that Dell took with this particular one. You'll notice that the keyboard isn't particularly like standout-ish or fancy or anything like that. It's just got this nice big trackpad and this is by far one of the biggest trackpads you can get. It just sort of looks minimal and, and just pleasant to, and aesthetically modern to look at. I really love this blue color that they use and I really love the materials. The entire computer is made out of sort of this nice aluminum and sort of plastic structure and it's, uh, it's very durable. It can probably take a beating if you're a student and you're throwing it in and out of a backpack. You're going to be able to kind of get that nice patina from it. Maybe the occasional scratch, but not damage. It's incredibly lightweight, so just the all-in-all -all feel, fit, and finish of this laptop is really quite good. In fact, I would say that it's almost rivaling that of the Dell XPS series, which is a considerably much more expensive computer. This computer starts at $799, and I think that it is fantastic value for most people, but let's go ahead and dive into some of the quick details here. For starters, I love that the keyboard is black keycaps and doesn't have that nonsense silver that like Asus is using their machines. You're going to find that the keys are very firm and feel sort of good and they're not very wobbly. You're not going to make a whole lot of typos on them. I think I average something about like 94 words per minute. Uh, somebody with faster fingers might even be able to get better than that. But nevertheless, your fingers sort of found the keys naturally and you were able to type pretty accurately. They feel good. There's one sort of interesting thing about this keyboard is that the keycaps are sort of like textured a little bit. And that's a new thing. I've never seen that before. Um, and that's kind of a nice little touch, I suppose. It's almost like little grips for your fingers. Uh, it does have a backlight on the keyboard as well. And of course, it's got a full-size numpad. So um, if you're an accountant and you're just sort of punching in numbers or you're doing data entry of any kind, this is going to be a pretty decent laptop for you. The trackpad, as I said, is nice and big. In fact, it's one of the largest compared to the MacBook Pro. It does have this nice sort of silver uh, trim around it to kind of give it that premium feel. It doesn't show that it can distinguish between a left and a right click on the actual trackpad. And actually, I kind of like that. But that said, it does. And it does also have multi-gesture support. You can use four fingers and three fingers to manipulate Windows 10 and do whatever you got to do. Uh, I would say that the ghosting on it is a little bit strange. The, the, the trackpad doesn't really ghost. In other, in other words, the cursor doesn't feel like it's moving around on ice. But that said, whenever you move the cursor around the screen, it just doesn't seem to really go where you sort of tell it to do. It either it just kind of goes a little bit further than you sort of wanted to. Nevertheless, it's not the worst trackpad I've, I've ever used. It's, uh, it's actually one of the better ones, but it's definitely not the quality of the MacBook Pro touchpad. And I probably shouldn't be comparing this thing to the MacBook Pro because it's not even in the same class as far as price is concerned, but nevertheless, just want to sort of give that idea that it's um, it's a good trackpad. It's, uh, it's not great, but it's a good trackpad, but it's nice and big, and I like that Dell did that. Now, let's talk about the screen. 15.6 inches. It is a full high definition 
touch screen, which some people are going to like. It can't bend all the way back like a tablet, but that's okay. Most people don't use that anyway. But what Dell has done is they've put a glossy screen on here with an anti-glare coating, and it is fantastic. You get that nice sort of rich vibrancy of a glossy screen, but the anti-glare coating really does a fabulous job of blocking out unnecessary ambient light. And we found that this really is one of the best screens on a mid-level laptop that you can get. Much, much better than the Asus Vivo books, even some of the more expensive Asus Vivo books. Maybe not quite as good as the Apple MacBook Pros, but again, not in the same price bracket either. The screen also gets bright enough for working in most environments, whether you're in an airport or whether you're outside on a school campus, you can probably max this thing out on the brightness, probably get somewhere around the 400 nit range there and abouts, although I haven't taken a light meter to it, and you'll be able to see pretty much with no issues whatsoever. Battery life on this thing is okay. It comes in probably at about like six hours of practical usage. So if you're doing like a lot of heavy uh, web browsing, watching videos online, listening to audio and stuff, expect to probably get about six hours or so uh, with the battery. Maybe even more if you're doing just like light level things like uh, Word documents or, or Excel spreadsheets. So most people are gonna probably wanna look elsewhere if they want the 10 plus hour battery, but nevertheless, it's uh, respectable for most 15.6 inch laptops these days. The computer comes with a webcam built in. It comes with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth. It has a dual microphone array at the top. And even though it doesn't have a Windows Hello compatible camera, it does have a fingerprint reader on it. And you just sort of, you know, it just looks nice and you just kind of touch it and register your finger. But I think what you all really want to know is what the webcam looks like. And here's what it looks like now. This is a test of the webcam on the Dell Inspiron 5000. It is Decent. Let's see if I bring some more light into the room. Is this gonna do anything? Eh. Still decent. The speaker quality on this laptop is fantastic. In fact, it is probably the best speakers I have ever seen on a laptop other than, you guessed it, the MacBook Pro. They're very, very loud. They don't distort. In fact, they're probably the loudest speakers I've ever used. They, uh, they don't really distort. It's not a whole lot of bass. There's a pretty good amount of treble in mids. Audiophiles are still probably going to want a set of headphones, but nevertheless, if you need to listen to a podcast or if you need to sort of like have your friends or somebody looking over your shoulder listening to any kind of audio on this thing, it really does get loud and the speakers are very, very good. I think you could probably do some pretty decent video editing and gaming on this thing as well. You could probably play things like Fortnite or maybe even like Cyberpunk on this stuff. You're not gonna be able to max out the settings or anything like that, but it definitely has the horsepower to be able to do a bit of more advanced gaming than the Intel UHD graphics cards. And as far as just general performance is concerned, you'll be able to just max out the Chrome tabs that you have running on this thing. You can watch videos on it. You can probably do some 1080p editing up to maybe like about 20 or 30 minute videos. You might even be able to eke out a 4K video on this thing, but not a large one and not with a whole lot of effects or anything like that. Uh, it's just not meant for like, you know, super video editing, but it can definitely get the job done for some small projects. You can definitely do audio processing on this thing as well. This might be a good little laptop to have just sort of sitting in an audio studio or like a DIY audio studio where you've got microphones and a switch and everything plugged in. It will be able to handle audio effects very well and be able to process Fruity Loops and other audio processing programs just fine. Let's go ahead and talk about the IO on this thing for a second. On this side, you've got the mini camera card reader, you've got a USB super speed port, and I'll get actually into that in a second, and then you've got a dual audio microphone headphone jack. And then on this side, you've got a USB-C port, another USB super speed port, HDMI in case you need to throw this bad boy on a TV or a projector, and then of course where you plug it in, because it doesn't run on solar energy. Let's just get this back to where it was. There we go, okay. Now, I really like that Dell included two USB super speed type A ports on both sides. A lot of the time, Dell likes to go a little bit cheap and add uh, another USB 2 port on it instead of having just all USB 3s or 3.1s or Cs. So it's nice that they gave two super speed ports on both sides. And then of course, you've got the USB C port on there for expandability as well. I do kind of wish that they had USB C charging on this laptop. Lenovo has shifted over to USB C charging on a lot of their models. And I kind of feel like Dell should do that too. But 
but instead you just get that classic sort of thin little Dell AC adapter that comes with it, which of course is like a yanking it off the table nightmare, although it would be the same with USB-C. But either way, it's about time we sort of universalize these laptop chargers. And I think one way to do that, of course, would be with having, having USB-C charging on it. You can charge your iPad and your laptop all in one go. But the bottom line here is, is that you've got a very, very fantastic mid-level notebook. I really, really love the color. I love the simplicity, the aesthetic, the lightweight. Um, everything about it is just pretty damn good. That's the given theme of this laptop, and it's just pretty damn good. It's not the best laptop ever made, but you know what? It's also not the most expensive laptop ever made. I think it's great value. I think anybody that buys it is going to like it. You are gonna be left with some of that sort of questionable Dell reliability lately. Uh, that said though, Dell's customer support seems to be pretty top notch, certainly much better than HP's. If you have an issue with it, they'll tend to send you out a replacement unit, then you send back the bad one first. And uh, to be fair though, we've also never had any issues with the Inspiron, the older Inspiron 15,000, 5,000 series notebooks, but these new ones, you know, again, uh, this is a, a fresh, fresh uh, test machine for us, so we don't, we can't really comment completely on the reliability other than we did get a weird quirk out of the box with ours. Hopefully that was just us and a normal uh, user won't have that same issue. But that said, really do like this computer a lot. I think a lot of people can get a lot of good use out of it whether it's for light gaming, for audio processing, maybe even a little bit of video editing. Just a nice all around good notebook for like college students, nonprofits, um, that, that kind of thing. So anyway, that's the Dell Inspiron 15 5000 series. Pretty damn good. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us in the comments section. Otherwise, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, I'm just gonna close this goddamn YouTube channel right up. I'm just gonna stop making videos for you people. Anyway, we hope you enjoy and we will be back with another video real soon.